The Burnout series is one that is absolutely filled with diehard fans across multiple generations, both new and old. It's a series that took arcade racing into a new, more ferocious direction and was all the better for it. A quick note before we move forward, please consider subscribing and enabling all notifications by clicking the bell icon to get new video updates. And while you're at it, also, please click the like button if you enjoy the video. It really helps us out. And with that out of the way, let's begin. At the turn of the new millennium, most racing games were focused on realism and accuracy when it came to how racing games looked and felt to play. The competition of which racing game would have the best graphics and most accurately portray how driving super fancy cars feels was a race that was largely already won by that time by games like Gran Turismo. For Criterion games to try to compete with that would have been a fool's errand, so it's nothing short of a miraculously genius decision that they didn't even try. They went in an entirely different direction. After developing the game Trick Style for the Dreamcast, Criterion wanted to make a racing game. One that puts entertainment and enjoyment ahead of realism and exactitude. Criterion knew that the fun of a great racing game wasn't necessarily tied to how realistic the physics were, or how accurately certain cars or tracks were portrayed, but was more so dependent upon that feeling that you get when all of the moving parts of a good racing game start to click. As you're whizzing by your opponents, taking hard turns like a champ, and eyeing that finish line at the end of the track. So the mission of Criterion's new racing game would be to take that moment of exhilaration and basically stretch it out throughout the entire game, while still balancing the experience out with aggressive AI opponents. The game that would result from this mentality would not be a perfect one, but it would be the game that everyone wanted without knowing it. It would be Burnout. Burnout and its subsequent sequel would both be published by Acclaim, and they would both see versions on the PlayStation 2, the Xbox, and the GameCube. All of the versions would run well and largely deliver on their promise. However, due to events outside of Criterion Games' control, their publisher Acclaim would see their financial troubles catch up with them, and they would have to file for bankruptcy. This forced them to sell all of their IP to different companies, and a lot of it would end up with EA. The relationship between Criterion and Electronic Arts did not start off on the right foot, though. The studio was in high demand, and as they were developing two games for EA, both would end up cancelled as a result of creative visions not matching up between the studio and the publishing giant. The two parties would eventually reconcile, though, and all of this would culminate into the classic that we know today as Burnout 3 Takedown. Takedown would feature basically the same ideas as the original two Burnout games, but it would be the ability to slam into opponents and crash them while racing that would set it apart. This combined the ferocious racing of the previous games with a little bit of a combat element that felt right at home in the series and has not left the series since. This new ability would also serve as the centerpiece for other modes of the game that were more focused on the takedowns themselves, and of course, crash mode, which would focus on causing as much damage as possible in a high traffic area by causing as dense a chain reaction of crashes as you possibly could with your one vehicle. All of these modes together made a really compelling game that sold and reviewed astoundingly well. Mainstream game reviewers would give Burnout 3 takedown nines pretty much across the board, with a few tens here and there. Most reviewers would cite the fact that this just felt like one of the best racing games of all time up to that point, and they weren't wrong for thinking that. The game is aggressive, it's flashy, and it's fun. Taking down enemy cars is about as exhilarating as any finishing move you could have done in an action game at that time, and just as visually dazzling as well. The game also ran incredibly well, with a smooth frame rate that rarely had any hiccups on either of the two systems it was released for. While the GameCube would end up missing out on this game, it would still get two excellent versions on the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox. The main world tour mode that consisted of races in different locales was incredibly fun, with the takedown element being implemented, and the road rage mode was just as fun, that would task players with achieving a certain number of takedowns within the time limit, while also avoiding being taken down themselves. The cherry on top, of course, was crash mode, which ended up being one of the most addicting things to ever be put in a racing game ever. You could redo certain levels many times and never get the same result, 
given that any little difference would change the chain reactions of crashes in a domino effect of sorts. Having multipliers and bonuses scattered throughout each crash mode map also helped a lot with replayability and motivating players to master each level before moving on to the next. Despite being probably the smallest part of the game, crash mode might be the most legendary at the same time. We've seen entire games be created today that only exist to emulate the feeling that Burnout 3 Takedown Crash Mode gave players. Despite some of those projects coming pretty close to that same feeling, Burnout 3 Crash Mode is still the best way to experience it. Burnout 3 also had a nice online mode that worked well for what it was at the time. This would let players from all over the world race each other with Burnout's revolutionary systems, and that gave it a lot of staying power long past its launch. Burnout 3 Takedown had a lot going on under the hood, but it was perhaps its presentation, its general vibe that set it apart, at least in an overarching sense. When most racing games were trying to be ultra sophisticated and mature, Burnout 3 Takedown went all in on attitude and style, and it worked. Everything from the soundtrack to the visual presentation of the menu screens oozed with Burnout attitude, and it was a breath of fresh air for anybody coming from Ridge Racer Type 4 or Gran Turismo 3. While many arcade racing games of today will claim to have Burnout as an inspiration, and that's always a good thing to see, as new arcade racers are always welcome in my book, there's no denying that Burnout 3 Takedown is still the game that did this sort of thing best. The only way to really build on this game is with a remake that stays true to what the game is, and hopefully we'll see something to that effect one day. And with that, we reached the end of the video. Have anything to say? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we upload new videos every single day on Gaming Bolt, so please consider subscribing as it really helps us out. Thanks for watching.